looking at our part one again let's just have a look at what needs to be done okay we know that part one is going to give us 40 marks um and it counts 20 percent so they give us a scenario with a diagram Part one, summary of activities. There's three activities. Each one is, um, well, the first two is 15 marks and the last one is 10 marks, 40 marks in total. Okay. Do they give us a marking rubric? Yes. Requirements. Right, so it says activity one, planning and deploying the installation of server infrastructure, 15 marks. At this stage, install the server for the head office, keeping in mind that the domain administrative tasks will be centralized and dealt with at the head office. Promote the server to a domain controller. What does that mean? Install Active Directory right so promoting the server to a domain controller means install active directory configure an automated server installation that will be used for server deployment for each mobile lab remember we spoke about wds windows deployment services windows deployment services was very simply a server that is installed it's a feature, it is a role that is installed on the server operating system. So you install Windows Server 2016, then you install WDS, you create an image of the computer that you wish to deploy. Deploy means to install on multiple computers. Remember, we've done this before. So all of these terms when I asked you to make some notes before, Windows deployment, we made notes on that. We made notes on what is a domain controller. So please go back and refer to your notes on each of these terms so that you fully understand what is this question asking of us. Promote the server to a domain controller. That means install Active Directory. Configure an automated server installation that will be used for server deployment. That's install WDS and configure WDS. Configure a server deployment infrastructure taking into consideration forest and domains that could be involved. We spoke about the concepts of forest and domains previously. So go back to your notes, right? So now, how is the 15 marks being allocated? For the head office, Choose one applicable mark allocation. The deployment of the installed server at the head office meet all requirements, all of the network requirements. So you need to go back and look at the case study and say, what are the network requirements? Then it says the installed server at the head office is promoted to the first domain controller. That's straightforward. The forest functional level is adequately configured. Remember? Functional levels were there for backward compatibility with different versions of Windows Server 2016, or Windows Server. The version that we are working on is Server 2016. If you don't have Windows Server 2012 or Windows Server 2008, then you don't need to set lower do uh, domain functional levels and forest functional levels. You can set the highest domain functional level, but then you also need to say why. 
So domain and forest functional levels are configured correctly. Automated survey installation, they're giving us four marks for WDS. Automated survey installation is outstandingly configured and ready for and used for deployment for each mobile lab. So you can see that you are expected to do the first one. It's adequately and appropriately configured, not the lesser marks. Forest and domain consideration. Choose one applicable mark allocation. The server infrastructure is outstandingly customized and well configured to cater for the current and future forest and domain forest needs specific to the network. So we need to have a thorough understanding of what the network is and what is involved. Then activity two says designing and implementing a network DHCP services. At this stage, install and configure DHCP service applicable to the domain. Your IP address management solution must consider suitable DHCP possible filtering and management task for the network. Requirements, DHCP, so they give us 15 marks here and the five marks is allocated to DHCP installation and configuration. Choose one applicable mark allocation. DHCP server is adequately configured, taking into consideration the entire network infrastructure of the forest. So we need to now have a thorough understanding of the case study. We're going to go back and look at the case study quickly now. But we need to know what we are looking for in the case study when we're reading through the case study. That's why we're looking at the questions and what is required of us first. Overall, choose one. Oh, did I do the second one? DHCP management. DHCP management solution is adequately configured, taking into consideration the entire network infrastructure of the forest and then overall configuration of DHCP. Now, they're giving us 15 marks. We cannot just show a picture of DHCP that's configured and say it's configured to hand out IP addresses. We need to clearly have an idea of how the IP addresses are going to be allocated to the different lands that you have in the case study. One DHCP is configured, but it will have multiple scopes. What is a scope? It is a range of IP addresses that will be allocated to the lands. So different lands will receive different IP addresses from your DHCP server but all of those scopes need to be configured in the DHCP server. Then activity three, designing and implementing network DNS services. At this stage, configure and secure name resolution applicable to the domain, include possible interoperability, replication, and zone configuration tasks. Let's understand each of those terms. Possible interoperability. In other words, DNS, your DNS server must work with other DNS servers. This is a named server. I cannot locate any computers on a computer network on an active directory network without DNS. Named server simply means when I ask for a computer's name, it's going to give me its IP address and then I know where to locate that computer. We discussed the other day about a namespace and we said it was a section of that DNS structure, worldwide structure. So possible interoperability means simply, you need to speak about how your DNS server is going to work with other DNS servers. Replication, DNS has got a database. We learned the other day about Active Directory replication. And what was Active Directory replication? It was copying or updating of the Active Directory database between multiple Active Directory servers. In the same way, we can also have DNS replication. But the DNS database is storing information about what? Name resolution. In other words, it's got a database of all computer names and their IP addresses. It's like a huge address book of 
computers all over the world. So this huge address book is broken down into different subsections or different namespaces. And for each of these namespaces, we have different DNS servers. We don't just have one DNS server, we have multiple DNS server. And we said previously, why do we do that? For fault tolerance, for load balancing, for performance. What was the other term? Zone configuration tasks. Zone. So that Active Directory, sorry, the DNS zone is a section of the DNS database. We call them zones. So if we take sections out of the DNS database, we call it a zone. And then they give us marks for installation and configuration interoperability and replication and then dns zone configuration so we defined each of these different terms and the, you can see according to the marking rubric they've allocated marks to each of them so you need to do some further research and look at what is dns interoperability what does it include and then you need to link it to the case study so that is part one. That's the part one story. So the part one story is installation of Active Directory, installation of DNS and DHCP. So in order for us to do this, we need to go back and look at our case study. Right, the first part of the story says you're an engineering student and at the career center at your campus has approached you as a junior systems engineer to help with the installation, configuration, administration, and management of the new career center ICT lab. The position requires that you have the knowledge of network ar architecture, computer architecture, client server administration, and client administration. You have been informed that you would be expected to apply various strategies to a range of problems in IT network infrastructure, use management tools to manage IT network, apply your knowledge and understanding of routing and security to the IT infrastructure project. So what, are, what is it that you're working on? The career center requires a medium-sized office network. So what you are setting up now is a medium-sized office network. It has a central office with four LAN segments. Now think now. Central office, and then it's got four LAN segments, meaning I'll have different IP addresses allocated in each LAN segment. DHCP, what scopes? I'm going to set up four scopes with the four different LAN segments. You should be making notes right in your head, but I'm recording it as well. You can go back and make notes of this. A branch office with a single LAN segment. So one branch office, another LAN segment, DHCP needs to have another scope for that LAN segment. Listen to how I'm reading the questions that's required of me, bearing in mind what's required of me in part one. A network that uses IP network protocol. We're going to be using TCP IP version 4. A demand dial connectivity from the branch office to the central office. So you need to now research how to set up a demand dial connection between the branch office and the central office. Demand dial means it's not always on. When you require the connection, then you establish the connection. It's like I don't always have a open line to my friend. Uh, when I need to talk to my friend, then I call the friend. So I'm saying the branch office and central office are friends. Demand dial or dedicated link connectivity from central office to an ISP. So I need internet connection. I need to be connected to an internet service provider internet connection 
and I have less than 2,000 clients. Specifications. They spoke about network specifications uh, in the question. According to the network specifications, you need to install Active Directory DNS DHCP. So if I'm looking now, it says the network must be a Windows client server using server 2016 or later and Windows 10. So I know my client computers are using Windows 10 and my server computers are using server 2016. That's my network specification. A Windows domain and domain controllers must be used. I'm going to install Active Directory. I'm going to install Active Directory. All clients are joined to the domain. So they need to have the version of Windows 10 that can join the domain, professional, enterprise, one of those. All objects must be created and configured using Active Directory and well organized. What objects are they talking about? Users, groups, organizational units. We need to think about how to set them up and how to configure them. Network diagram. Below is the entire network diagram, the entire network diagram. They've given it to you. So now, based on this diagram, we are going to set up DNS, DHCP, Active Directory. Below is the entire network diagram. You are not expected to configure and connect all the nodes as it is the responsibility of other network engineers. In other words, they're saying every single computer you don't have to uh, connect. Every single device you don't have to connect and configure. We've got other network engineers to do that. Part one and part two will clearly indicate and provide you with the details of your network administration and engineering roles and responsibilities. So in part one, they said install Active Directory, install and configure DHCP and DNS. Let's understand the um, office network or the network diagram now. There's one remote branch office that they spoke about, and they said that there's four LANs in the head office. So here we can see that there's a connection to the internet service provider. We can see that we've got a mail server, LAN server, proxy servers. We've got a, a department LAN. Okay. Now, Active Directory objects. Your lecturer will provide you with the... Uh, with the required Windows Server Active Directory objects. These include organizational units, user accounts, group accounts, computer accounts, network shares and folders, storage technologies like files and folders, including permissions and ownership and printers. In addition to the above, your lecture will also assist you with the IP information configuration strategy. Following the industry best practice at all times when creating objects, naming objects, and securing objects. User accounts. The user accounts must have the logon name, display name, email address, and password that does not expire. The user accounts must be linked to a student user account, home directory, H, etc. The user account must belong to a global security group. The group must be... Um, must be members of the main security universal group. The user accounts must be given access to a student per qualification shared folder by all students registered for the modules in that qualification. And the user accounts must be given access to public folder, example, uh, the W folder. Then computer accounts and security there there are a number of computer rooms and labs each computer room consists of a number of computers and other devices you have been tasked with the organize with organizing the computers and devices into their respective ous in active directory Computers in respective OUs in Active Directory. Computers must be functional and joined to the domain, while all other network devices are shared in the domain. Security. 
you have been asked to minimize surface attack by configuring restrictive desktop settings in the environment. This includes the following. Security is going to be implemented by a group policy. Now, they are giving us information that's not necessarily going to be done in task one. All this information is for both task one and task two. So group policy, we're not doing in task one. So we don't have to worry about this for now. Then, department land. The department land consists of, as indicated above, your lecture will indicate, will provide you with the resources, nodes required, including the quantity of each resource that is required. So you've got multimedia land, training lab, research lab, and server room. And then you've got three offices. So the department land has got the following. Now, this is the central office, okay? They've got multimedia lab, training lab, research lab, and server room. For each of these, you need to create three user accounts. Okay, so for each of these, you need to create three user accounts. The requirement was that you go and configure all of those settings in the user account. So for each of those three that you have created, you're going to create those user settings. So reconfigure those user settings. Okay, so now you've got multimedia lab. You're going to create an OU for multimedia lab. You're going to create an OU for training lab. You're going to create an OU for research lab, and you're going to create an OU for the server room. OUs. Then you're also going to create a group for multimedia lab, training lab, research lab, server room. So you create OUs, you create groups for each of them. These are now global groups. We're also going to create universal groups because they said the user must part, be part of a group that is a uh, global group and this global group must be added to a universal group for the remote branch office the remote branch office consists of a test center lab a training lab open office interview room server room and three offices so for each of these labs, in turn, we're going to create OUs and we're going to create groups. Here as well, three user accounts, three computer accounts per lab. User accounts and computer accounts. About the test center lab in the table above. At the end of each series of training sessions, Candidates are required to write their test exams in the test center lab. You have been told that a maximum of 20 candidates can write their test examinations at one time. The nature of the examinations requires that candidates receive read-only test to exam files from the test folder location, work on these files, and then save it um, Right, so for security regions, each candidate is required to log on with test exam account using unique log on username and password, giving them the ability to retrieve examination files uploaded in the test or examination home folder. They will then save their answer files in the same folder only the logged on test examination account has access to this folder. So now for this uh, test center lab, they said we need to create additional user accounts for these users. You're going to create three additional user accounts for these 
exam account folders. Oh, sorry, exam account. Um, three additional exam accounts. But the details of which we'll discuss as we go along. Okay, so that's all the information that they've given us here. Now, looking at, and your first ICE activity is going to be coming up with a plan as to how you are going to install Active Directory, what naming conventions are you going to use, what OUs are you going to use, what uh, groups you're going to create, what user accounts you're going to create, etc. Right? So, Basically, it's going to be a plan of what you're going to be doing to answer part one. And it's all the three sections. Okay, so your ICE activity is a Word document, or you can copy and paste it. I will create a um, place for you to submit it on RC Learn. I'll do that today. Okay, so you're going to do a Word document on what the plan of how to answer what user accounts what is your domain name how many domain controllers you're going to install for this one you're only going to install one domain controller okay active directory so it's your plan for active directory all the user group all the accounts that you're going to create and what you're going to name them okay the only specification I've given you is when you're creating a, a group, a lab of accounts, for each department, you're going to create three of the accounts. Okay, that's all that you need for, um, from me for now. The naming convention that you're going to use, when you name something, it needs to be meaningful. So in other words, if I'm going to create a user account that is going to be found in test center lab or in training lab, or a computer account. Let me say the computer account. Test sent lab PC one. If you look at your PCs here, how are they named? RBCF 402 PC 28. Roseland College Brown Team. Room 402 PC number 28. Can you see? That is a meaningful name. That is good naming convention. So when you are naming, when you are naming your computer accounts, your user accounts, your group accounts, your organizational units, you need to use names like this. What was it? RCBF, Rosebank College, Bramfontein. 402, the room number. And then it was PC number. Can you see? So do the same when you are naming your computer, user, group, etc. accounts. So we're going to leave it there for today.